hello friends we are still not employed by a fang company so let's not stop till we get there today we are going to solve a lead code medium problem a maximum product of sub arrays let's hear the problem statement we are given an array of integers and we need to find a continuous non empty sub array uh, whose product or or multiplication of all the values in the continuous non empty sub array is the maximum value for the given input let's try to understand this with a given example over here we can see that we are given the values uh, 2 3 -2 and 4 if we see in the example we can clearly see that the maximum sub array we can get is for the first two elements and if we do the product of it we get the value 6 now we cannot do anything regarding the other two values because we see a one minus value here so even if we were to do the multiplication of all these values we would receive minus 12 and uh, if we do something like this if we would receive minus 8 so the, because we have a negative value the maximum we can get is 6 let's understand what could be the brute force approach to solve this problem suppose we are given an input array like this and if we take every single sub array like this and we start doing the product of all the elements in the sub array and we keep a variable called max value and we continuously keep on updating the max value variable eventually we would find a sub array whose value would be maximum and in this example it would be the entire input as our sub array because all the values are positive so whenever we keep on multiplying the next value our maximum value will always go up and the total would be 120 for the scenario let's see what are the issues we can find with this uh, brute force approach the time complexity for brute force approach would be big o of n square because say we are given an input array like minus 1 2 minus 3 4 we need to do a sub array again a sub array again a sub array and then we would eliminate the first value and we would start doing the sub array from again so for all the n elements in an array we have to iterate over them n times and overall time complexity becomes big o of n square which is really horrendous and we should try to find a better approach let's see what could be the better approach we can take here suppose we are given this input array now if we want to calculate that what is the maximum value we can get in terms of continuous product we can do something where we would use dynamic programming and we are going to keep the results of whatever the sub array we have already calculated now let me let, let, let me explain what i'm trying to say for the first value if we see we only have one so the maximum product would be one for the first two values the maximum product we can achieve is plus 2 now for the first three elements 1 2 and 3 the maximum product we can achieve would still remain plus 2 because the third value we have is actually a negative value so the sum the multiplication of all three all these three elements would become minus 6 and because we have minus 6 we still consider 2 to be our maximum value that we can achieve up until now and when we try to go for the next value we see that the next value is minus 4 and if we only keep our if we only keep multiplying with the maximum possible value we can find up until now we this is what we would try to do we would try to see that hey until the first three elements the maximum sub array i can find is 2 let me try to multiply 2 by minus 4 and we would get a result of minus 8 which is again not a very good solution again the value is low so the maximum value we can find is still 2 but we are missing a key point here that if we take my, this as minus 3 and if we see that what was the minimum value up until first three elements we find that the minimum value is actually minus 6 and if we multiply minus 6 with minus 4 we actually get a result of plus 24 
which is much higher than our uh, current max product we had which was two let me clean this up a little bit and let me explain you better what i'm trying to mention and we will try to see some examples for this now let's consider a different approach suppose for every single iteration we do rather than keeping track of just the maximum product what if we keep track of maximum and minimum product at the same time and see how well we can go ahead now let's apply this in our given example so when we are at the first value the maximum and minimum value we can achieve is always going to be just one so nothing special there but when we are at the second value the maximum value we can achieve from this sub array as multiplication is actually two and minimum is also two because both are positive integers now when we get to the third value the maximum value we can achieve is going to be uh, two again because the third value is negative so it is in our best interest to keep the maximum as two but if we keep track of minimum value we would find that the minimum we can get is actually minus six now when we get to the fourth value we would try to see that what is the maximum we can get and we don't have any condition that we are only going to check going to multiply this minus four with previous max only we would try to multiply minus four with previous max and previous min So in this scenario, the maximum value we can find for minus four is actually going to be minus six times minus four, which is going to be plus 24. So over here we would receive plus 24. And what is the minimum value we can find? So the minimum value we can find would actually be the multiplication of previous value, uh, previous maximum value with minus four which would be minus eight. And when we get to the last value five, again, we will do the same thing. So we will try to multiply five with the max and min of the of up until previous sub array. So previous value was actually 24. So 24 times five, we are going to get 120 over here. And the previous min value was actually And so here we can clearly see that because we were keeping track of previous two elements in our given example, we were able to calculate that what would be the maximum values and what would be the minimum values at every single iteration. And let's see how we can use it. So suppose if at the beginning of array, we create three elements, one is to keep track of maximum number. Second one is, keep, is to keep track of minimum number. Third one is to keep track of results. Initially, the value of result would be one. Uh, for the during the second iteration, the value of result would become two. For the third iteration, it will also remain two. For the fourth iteration, it will actually come as 24. And finally, we would get our answer as 120. And uh, at the end, we can just simply return that the maximum product we can get for any sub array for the given example would be 120. So since we know that uh, we only have to iterate through the given input array just once and because we are keeping track of max value and min value, we are able to calculate result every time and whenever we want, uh, whenever we reach at the end of the loop, we can just simply return the response. So time complexity in this uh, scenario would be big O of n, which is a big improvement compared to what we had for the uh, brute force approach. And space complexity is actually going to be big O of one because we are only keeping track of two variables at once and we, are, we don't have to create any additional data structure or any. pretty efficient approach. And now let's move on to coding. Now we'll start coding by creating three variables, uh, min product, and we initialize it to one, max product, 
we also initialize it to 1 and result we initialize it to the first element in the input array now let's create a for loop to iterate over the input array and now let's compare computing values for all three elements So for max product, we need the maximum value out of the following three. Uh, we, we are going to check the current value we are on. We are also going to check that whether the maximum product of uh, that we already have multiply by current number and also the minimum product that we already have multiply by current number. Because in case both values are negative, uh, our max product will actually be updated in that scenario. Now comparing three elements in Java is a little bit tricky. So we are going to use uh, the math.max function a little bit differently here. And we will create another math.max function to compare the other two values. And now we are going to find the minimum of these three elements to store it in the min product. Notice one thing that we directly cannot use uh, max product times number of i in our min product calculation because max product is already updated in this line. So we are going to create a temporary variable to store the value of max product times number of i. Now we just need to update the result to see if we can find the maximum product. We are going to compare it with current result we have and we are going to see that whether the max product or min product is the maximum value we can achieve. Once the iteration is done, the result should have the maximum value we can find that would be the product of any subarray. So let's return that. Let's try to run our code. It looks like we don't have any bugs. Let's try submitting it. And our solution works pretty efficiently. And uh, thank you for following the video guys please let me know in the comments what kind of problems do you want me to do more or if you have any suggestions on how can i improve my videos it takes a lot of time to create these videos and i would appreciate if you can just drop a like or subscribe thank you so much